how long of a trip it was. Yes, uh, just under two years. Took us. To, we, yeah, we set sail from Florida and then down to the bottom of the world. Took about two years, you know. And it probably we probably could have done it in a little over a year, but when the boat caught on fire, that we had to come back to the states and uh, yeah, raise little, some funds. Little boat on fire, you know. <laughs> whatever. It's uh, you know. Yeah. yeah, small problem. Yeah, yeah small problem. <laughs> we tried duct tape. It didn't work. <laughs> it did not work. <laughs> it didn't. Welcome to the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Join me and a famous guest. We discuss their career, life, food, Texas, and everything in between. Let's get started. The Lone Star Play Podcast is produced by TexasRealFood.com. Find out more at the end of this episode. Hi, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. We have a wonderful episode today. Uh, we have the team behind Hell or High Seas. It's a film available now uh, on your favorite streaming service. Just uh, Google Hell or High Seas and you'll find it. Go to their website, hellorhighseas.com. Um, it's a phenomenal documentary film about a journey. Uh, from the Gulf Coast all the way down to Cape Horn. Um, And it's basically to bring attention to veterans with uh, PTSD. Um, Taylor Greiger, um, who is the main, I guess, star of the film. I hate to say that, but star, the main guy in the documentary who goes on the journey down to, uh, you know, down to Cape Horn on a boat, on a sailboat. Uh, He talks about the boat, it's like a 35-foot you know, boat. So it's not typically made for this either. Um, it, it's just fascinating. Um, and Shane Gregg, who's a producer uh, on the film. So um, we talked to them about, yeah, the film and what it's about, what it's meant to be veterans with PTSD. How can we bring more attention to it? What they're doing to bring more attention and what they're bringing real solutions, y'all. Adventure therapy. Okay, if you've never heard of those two words put together before, now you have. Look it up. Adventure therapy. And hell or high seas, it's what they do now. Um, again, it's a phenomenal film. Tell, tell people about this film. If you know a veteran, this is for veterans, y'all. This episode is for veterans and about veterans. So if you know a veteran, have them listen to this podcast and check out that film. Okay, Um, Taylor is a veteran of the Navy, and, you know, he's just doing, quote unquote, God's work, if you will. Um, And, yeah, I I just can't tell you how wonderful the film is and how much I support it, how much we support it here at the podcast. So please, check it out, hellorhighseas.com. All right, and my conversation with Taylor and Shane coming up here in just a moment. Real quick, just a word from our sponsor, Texas Real Food, because we got to keep the mics on. We'll be right back, y'all. Hi, I'm here to tell you about TexasRealFood.com. It's a great website where you can find local farm fresh food in Texas. Just enter your zip code, okay? It'll bring up Texas farms and ranches, farmers markets, farm to table restaurants, and more that are around you. It's really easy to use. Also, if you think there's a business that should be on the list that isn't on there, let us know. We'll get them at it. As well as being able to enter your zip code and find all the great places around you, we also have great recipes, cooking techniques. You can learn about food and Texas food specifically um, and local food events that are happening in Texas. So it's a great website aside from that. And it also features, of course, the Lone Star Plate podcast that it produces. Um, We've also got some other features as well, like Food for Thought, Fresh from the Kitchen, Tasting Texas, the Texas Mom Blog, Real Food, Promptuary, a lot of great resources about Texas, all things Texas, focusing on Texas farmers and ranches and, you know, real food, y'all. Okay, so anyway, please go to TexasRealFood.com right now and begin your Texas journey for great food. All right, back to the show. All right, guys, thank you so much for staying with us. We've got the interview coming up here in just a moment. Want to tell you real quick about our social media. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Just search The Lone Star Plate. And if you're on YouTube watching, just hit 
the subscribe button. That'd be awesome. Hit the notification bell. That way you'll be notified of all the great videos we put out every week because we break down the episodes into clips. Yes. And hit the like button. That'd be cool. Leave a comment. People have been leaving a lot of comments. Some people have been leaving multiple comments, which I love. So comment away. Thank you so much for supporting us. We do appreciate it. All right, guys, let's get to this episode. Again, hell or high seas. This is for veterans, y'all. <coughs> Pardon me. My father was a veteran. My grandfather was a veteran. I have cousins who were veterans, um, friends. Um, definitely something that a lot of them struggle with is PTSD, and this is a solution. And this is a great journey to learn about that. So, again, great film. We got Taylor Greiger and Shane Gregg. Enjoy. And Cape Horn is the Mount Everest of sailing. That was going to be his odyssey. Even though I had no sailing experience, Taylor asked if I would go with him. And that was crazy. I had no idea what to expect, but I said yes. This had the potential to be the adventure of a lifetime. But I also knew that Taylor needed this. He'd been diagnosed with PTSD, and he was having a rough time transitioning out of the military. Taylor needed time and distance to help process his experiences in the Navy. I tell you what, let's do this. Um, if, if you guys want to each introduce yourselves and then just say where you're at. Uh, Taylor, we'll, we'll start with you. Cool. My name is Taylor Greger, and I'm south of Houston in uh, League City. And uh, I'm, I'm Shane Gregg, and uh, I'm in a suburb outside of Philadelphia. Oh, nice. Oh, Philly. Okay. I used to live in Lancaster for about three years, I guess. Um, oh, yeah. I know it well. It's a yeah. nice area. Yeah. Yeah. Good times, man. I used to go to Philly a lot, uh, Atlantic City, probably too many yeah. times. Uh, <laughs> but uh, always a good time. It's like a little Europe over there because you can just hit. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm from Texas originally, so and I'm in Texas now. Getting anywhere but the city you're in takes a while. Yeah, so I've heard. Right, right. T Taylor knows, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, if you want to yeah. go to another town, it's three hours. Yeah. <laughs> That's the standard rule. <laughs> <laughs> want to go out? Yeah. Let's, let's, uh, I need a day out. Let's rent a car. Dude, right. I had the... I had my first, I caught myself doing that. Um, so John, the guy that we sailed to Cape Horn with, he just moved to Texas. They live in Pearland. And uh, we went to the beach and he's like, hey man, I got to go get a beach towel. I was like, oh, well, there's a store. It's right up the road, dude. It's like a couple minutes down the road. He texts me 45 minutes later. He's like, yeah, right up the road. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, what to a Texan uh, right up the road is a little bit different. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> what a great story. Uh, well, look, gentlemen, uh, it's so such a pleasure to have you guys. Um, I had a chance to uh, to watch this this wonderful film, um, you know, that I know took a long time, a lot of blood, sweat and tears. Uh, you know, I come from the restaurant industry myself. You know, I had a food truck for a long time. I've worked all over the world in all kinds of different restaurants. Like it, it's a it's a lot of hard work. I know what it takes to like do this journey, not like this. Uh, of course, but um, I'm curious to just, you know, dive deep into a bunch of this stuff. So I figured we'd just start with basically like for people listening or watching, what, what is this film about? It's called Hell or High Seas. So just, I guess, an elevator pitch of what this film is about. Yeah. Um, well, when I got out of the military, I had a, had a really hard time adjusting back into civilian society. And uh, we talk about that a lot in the film. Um, but it got to the point where it got so bad, you know, I talked to my buddy, Steven, who spent his entire um, educational career. He got his PhD um, studying combat veterans returning back to the States. And he wrote a book about it. And um, a lot of the stuff that I was going through, I didn't understand what was going on with my body. Um, I didn't understand why adrenaline would just start running through it. And um, he's the first person, the civilian, to explain to me what happened and why my body is reacting this way. And I was like, dude, of all the people in this world, all the doctors I've talked to in the military, you're the first person that's ever said this. <laughs> and um, so, you know, we got together and, and we decided we need to make sure all the boys getting out after us understand what's going on, that there's no question. Um, so 
they know what the problem is and how to fix it because that's half the battle, man. It was scary as hell um, doing it alone. And we are like, well, what's the best way to reach anybody in the States? You know, how are we going to reach somebody sitting in Idaho or Wyoming alone that's been in pain for years? And we're like, well, this is really the first time in our history where we have a medium to do that, you know, through film. Guys came back from World War II and, and Vietnam, and they just went back alone out in the middle of the woods by themselves, you know, because that's what you want to do. Hell, that's what I still want to do today. But, um, but yeah, you can use film um, to reach people. And so we, we started making kind of YouTube videos to try and reach veterans. And, you know, we did start out with the intention of, of making a sort of documentary to, to show my experiences and how we worked through them. Um, but we never thought it was going to happen. You know, um, <laughs> that, that, that dream didn't make a reality till my boat caught on fire off the coast of Chile and Steven flew home. And that's when he met Shane and Glenn and the team there in Philadelphia. Save the day. They did. Yep. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's a that's a wonderful part of the film uh, as well. Um, I guess, you know, spoilers will just, you know, right? I mean, uh, you know, we can do a little spoilers, but we can't give away all the spoilers. Yeah, of course. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Um, that, there's not even enough time. Um, it's, a, <laughs> it, it's a it's a roller coaster ride of a film. Um, I had no idea where it was going. Um, when I watched it, I tried not to even, I didn't, I, I think I barely even watched the trailer because I like to go into something, just nothing. Let me just experience this. And I felt like I was on the journey with y'all, to be honest with you, like, okay, what's going to happen? You know, doesn't go down the way you think it is, but it goes down in the way it almost should have. Right. Do you, do you, do you sort of think that way, Taylor, looking back at this now? Um, I know it's hard in retrospect, right. To, to look back. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's funny that you say that. I mean, it's kind of a ironic joke that we have between us all now. You know, we all have these goals and things we set out for for the film. Um, but that's kind of one of the coolest things about this whole process is everything that we wanted to happen has not happened at all. <laughs> at all. I mean, to the extent, like, just, just that story. Yeah, for real, dude. Every time that's I'm like, God, come on, please just save us this one time. And yeah. we would just get wrecked, you know, yeah. um, with all aspects of the film. And, um, uh, like, like I was talking about earlier, my boat caught on fire and we were sinking, you know, we were going to die. And that was probably one of the worst cases. Oh my God. And, uh, but that led to us meeting Shane and Glenn at Fresh Fly and, and turned it into this documentary. So, I mean, that, that's kind of happened over and over again with it, even like the fundraising, um, trying to get the film out and do the screenings. Um, yeah, yeah. that keeps happening today. Absolutely. Um, real quick, just for, you know, just so people know, this film came out limited release, right? Um, in October, October 8th, am I correct? It sort of was released limited wise. How are people going to be able to see this or how is that going to work? Are you doing these screenings? Is that sort of what you're, you're implying? Yeah. Yeah. We had a limited release in October in, in some theaters and, uh, and now it's available through streaming services. Uh, so Oh, you, perfect. You can rent it on Apple, YouTube, uh, Comcast on demand, Spectrum on demand. So it's, it's, if you just Google it, it pops up, you know, um, and uh, it's available to rent right now. Yeah. People so can figure that stuff yeah. out, right? Yeah. They're smart. They know how to stream nowadays. They don't, you yeah. know what I mean? It's not like Most it used to be. Do. Most yeah. people, yeah. Still some people that are like, where's the button on your website yeah. to watch the film? And it's like on the front page. It's actually on the front page. Yeah. It's like, it says click now. Watch. Big button. Yeah. Big button. I can't yeah. see the click now button guys. Yeah. Make it bigger. Uh, that's hilarious. Well, that's uh, just like you said, their journey you as well. Flash, Taylor. Yeah. Flash, yeah. Flash, like, click now, click now, click now. Like, you know, like one of those cheesy ads where you're like, fine, I'll click it. That's just catch, it just catches fire. Like yeah. The boat you know click here that's how far. <laughs> uh no that's awesome okay so so shane so you get involved how or is it because you saw this they came to you and said hey we got this this store we need help or you you knew like i guess let's talk a little bit about how you you got involved sure yeah i mean we saw um some of the footage uh of what taylor and stephen were doing uh, and, okay. uh and that's how we first kind of found out what they were doing. And then we found out when, when we had a better understanding of like, what was this all about? Um, we really, uh, 
were interested in, and you know, because you know, Taylor and Steven were trying to do something for other people, you know, they're trying to yeah. do something bigger than themselves. Yeah. And that was like, that's like been the whole mantra ever since we started this was like, you know, it's, it's meant to be a service and support for those who need it, you know? Um, and it's meant to provide hope where hope is needed. It's uh, resiliency where resiliency might be needed. Yeah. And uh, it's meant to inspire and, and uh, stories can be really powerful. Um, and Taylor's story, in my opinion, is, is really powerful. And uh, we see that a lot in the responses we get from people that watch it. Um, and they're varied responses. And the, the great thing, I, the thing that we really love about the film is it really, it, it seems to be able to meet people where they are. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And everybody is able to kind of uh, pull away something from it, depending on their personal life, uh, sure. where they are in life. It kind of it kind of applies across the board to anybody. Um, I mean, originally we meant it to be for for a veteran audience, um, but it certainly transcended that. And uh, you know, we have civilians. I, I'm a civilian. I'm not a veteran. Um, yeah, I've learned so much through this process. So much. Um, I'm just so much more grateful for, uh, you know, the veterans of this country and, and what they've done and, and what they go through. And, um, you know, that's, uh, it's really, it's really cool to be part of something that, uh, is supporting that, that group of that community, you know? Absolutely. Of um, course. Do you have so, any family members that are Shane that are? Yeah, that actually time? my dad is a Vietnam veteran. Um, yeah. so in the Navy, and interestingly enough, like we very rarely talked about that, uh, if not like really ever, he just didn't talk about it. But yeah. since I've done the movie, we've had a couple of conversations um, and uh, that's been really cool, man. Um, you wow. know, they're, they're, I just sit and listen, you know what I mean? There's nothing yeah. really to say, like, cause sure. I can't relate to his experiences, um, but I just hear what he has to say. And um, that's pretty cool. No, that's amazing. No, t Taylor, did, was your family, in the military as well? Is that sort of how you got into it? Uh, there's not a lot of people. My brother was in the Navy. Um, and then my grandfather was in World War Two. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, that's pretty much it. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So same sort of my dad was in the Air Force, but he, he just sort of did the four years and right after Vietnam, he got stationed in Alaska and some weird thing. He did not have a good experience. I mean, nothing crazy. I mean, he still, always supported the military. But he was just like, oh, man, I was glad to get out of that, uh, <laughs> you know, get out of that. And and kind of like uh, Shane said, you know, he never really wanted to talk about it, to be honest with you. He was like, he just never brought it up. Or his buddies definitely had a lot of friends, right? It's always like you know somebody. You may not be a veteran yourself, but you know somebody or your family or somebody, you know. I think that's why you can relate when you watch the film. You're just like, man, you either worked with a guy or, or you know or some or a female or somebody you know what i mean just somebody and you can just relate so much um you know i wanted to wait a little bit before we do dove into really the heart of you know what this film's about just sort of warm up with an appetizer if you will um and move into like you know about this depression that comes upon soldiers you know when they come back you you know in the film you talk about go 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 and then it's like, stop, 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 right? Everything is just a complete uh, change of, you know, play, pace. Um, you know, wh why do you think that not being able to overcome that change of pace is so hard? Like, because there's other, I don't know, sports players who they get off the field and they go do this, I, you know, I don't know, maybe there's more to that too. You know, is there, so what is it about, the military experience in and of itself? Yeah, that's a good, that's a great question. Um, the best way I can describe it is, let's say you work on a flight deck in the Navy, any job, chalk and chainers, refuelers, anything, um, doesn't, doesn't have to be what I did. Um, and you go on a nine month deployment, you're, every time you're working on that flight deck, you're thinking you're going to die. You're constantly looking at propeller spinning and, and aircraft landing and shit breaking, um, fuel spilling. Is it going to catch fire? You're handling munitions all the time. Is that going to blow up on you? Yeah. Um, but the big part is all the moving parts like tractors run you over or other aircraft run you over getting your head chopped off by a propeller um, or rotors. Um, so if you live like that for nine months continuously, your adrenaline has been running that whole time. 
um, and cortisol has been pumping through your body that entire time. And cortisol is directly linked to uh, reducing the surface area of your hippocampus. And your hippocampus is what controls your fight or flight reaction. So say you're in the Navy, I'm just like speaking to what I know. Say you're in the Navy for 10 years and you're living in that environment for nine, 10 months every single year. How much is your hippocampus shrunk from all the cortisol and adrenaline being released to it every single day? So when you get out, um, after 10 years, your body's used to running at that tempo. Your body's used to releasing adrenaline and cortisol on a daily basis, constantly. And that doesn't just stop or shut off. Your hippocampus is shrunk at this point. Yeah. So you'll get these moments. Um, you'll be doing nothing at all. And, and this still happens to me. I was in home. I was talking to my therapist the other day. I was in Home Depot um, this, this last week. And I wear this whoop strap to keep track, like working out and your heart rate and shit. And, um, and I got this notification on my phone. And it said, oh, you, you've been in a strenuous activity for 15 minutes. And I'm like, what the shit is this thing talking about? And I open my <laughs> phone, I look at my heart rate. My heart rate's been at like 175, 180 for the past oh, wow. 15 minutes as I walked in. Oh, Just for God. no reason. I'm not even doing anything, dude. I'm yeah. walking around. Nobody's yeah. bumping into me or yelling or anything. Yeah. So your, your body just dumps adrenaline for no reason at all. Um, that's one oh. of the scariest things that happened to me. I, I was just driving, you know, and um, it, it started running. My body would run away. I had no control over it and just run away on its own. Um, oh. And then that amplified with, there's a direct um, link between adrenaline and memory recall. So that's why a lot of the memories um, that you have when people go overseas and they're in a bad situation um, or you put your hands on somebody who didn't make it. Um, you remember those moments for the rest of your life because your adrenaline's pumping at a high level during when that's yeah. going on. So your adrenaline starts running for no reason when you're in the States, you know, and you start thinking about everything that happened overseas um, and you're reliving it like it's happening. So some of the clearest memories you can imagine. Um, and that just compounds on top of itself. You got your body running away. You're living in this dark place. All you're seeing is death all the time, man. You don't want to live anymore. There's nothing really worth living. If you just see death and you're in pain all day long. Um, I hope that's, that kind of clears it up. That's kind of the best way I can describe what it's like. No, absolutely. I, I mean, it's that's kind of an eye-opening idea, at least for people like myself. Uh, that, you know, this idea, I, I had no idea about the, you know, the cortisol, the, the bodily effect, you know, it's a physical thing. Because I, I guess, you know, right. you'll, you'll hear people say, well, just get over it, right? What are you doing? Right. What's your problem, man? And what's it, you know, what's the deal? Just get get past this you didn't even see combat you right. know or whatever the case may be which is like what what have you done you know first of all but anyway that's a separate conversation but yeah i, I mean I, that was a crazy stat as well like that non-combat were committing more suicide than combat veterans i mean there's just a lot of i think just a lot of eye-opening data that it's just like whoa whoa this is not because you know how are we going to solve the problem if we don't even understand you know, where it's at and where, it, where it's coming. So if it's some sort of a physical thing, what are solutions that you think, you know, balance that out? I mean, is that why this adventure therapy, this sort of idea of taking people out on the sea is that, you know, yeah, I guess let's dive into that. Like why? Yeah, exactly. Um, you, you hit it on the head. Um, so that's why we, we chose sailing. Um, there's countries preventing suicide better than we are today, specifically the UK and Israel. Um, there's a lot of studies that have come out and it's published on our foundation's website. Um, and what they do is after you go on a nine month or 12 month deployment, you're required by their version of their UCMJ to go on some sort of adventure therapy program to kind of let your body decompress. And, um, and that was kind of the light switch for me like you kind of mentioned a minute ago, uh, I had no idea the physiological changes that happened yeah. to my mind, my body. I had no idea. And Absolutely. I was just getting frustrated with myself. Like why, yeah. why can't I get over it? You know, yeah. I'm supposed to help people not ask for help. Right. And, um, I just, I'm so, like, I was pissed at myself for being such a bitch, you know, I thought I was, you know, I, sure. that's what I thought for real. It just compounds itself. Right. Yeah. It just, um, yeah. I, and when Steven explained it to me and showed me all the research behind it and how your body physically changes, um, that was a light switch for me. Like, wow, well, that makes perfect sense. We we'll just fix it. Absolutely. We just heal. We we'll just heal. 
I didn't yeah. know that you could heal, right? Um, so back to adventure therapy, what adventure therapy does is after you've been in these environments, you go on a, it doesn't have to be, but you know, we go on two week expeditions or sailing trips. Um, and like what the UK does, they'll send their guys on uh, hiking or kayaking trips or they have a sailing one. Actually, you probably saw them in the film, the, yeah. the active duty guys we ran into in the Panama Canal. Oh, they were yeah. the first, yep. they were the, I, so I knew Israel was doing it, but I know the UK was doing it. Um, cause they saw our mission 22 flag flying on the boat and, um, they're like, what the hell are you guys doing out here? You know, we talked about veteran suicide and, and I was like, what the heck are active duty guys in the UK army doing out here on a sailboat in the Panama canal? Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. you know, well, we want to make sure, you know, guys, you get blown up, you're taken care of physically when you come back or uh, you get shot, you're taken care of. But more importantly, we want to make sure all our guys are mentally stable when they come back and, and healthy to work. Um, so a third of their unit at a time is required to go on an event, wow. adventure therapy expedition for two weeks. And they go like from the lowest dude in the pole to their CO, their CO is actually out on the boat. And I just thought, I was like, what does that do for like command morale? And you coming into work every day in the military, you know, you've invested millions of dollars in these people to train them. And then you take care of them, the work that they commit, as opposed to in the States where, um, like my cycle, I was in for six years and every single year I'd go on either nine, my longest one was 13 months um, every year. And you, like, I was burnt out at the end, dude. I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> Absolutely. Some guys do that for 20 years. Um, yeah. So other countries have seen it and there's a lot of research in our own country about how the body reacts to, uh, to operating at that tempo for so long. And what adventure therapy does is you get in an environment with a group of people who've been through what you've been through and you get your adrenaline running, but instead of cortisol being released, thinking you're going to die, uh, your endorphins are released along with that adrenaline. So when your adrenaline starts running and you have, you know, your memory recall, instead of seeing the darkest, deadliest moments of your life, you're seeing the most beautiful things you've ever seen in the world. You know, it's giving you that, that reason to want to live again. And also it helps regrow your hippocampus. It's been shown to regrow your hippocampus releasing endorphins and adrenaline in a healthy environment and, and talking about what you went through. Um, if you want to, you don't have to, most people just come out and uh, want to feel alive again, you know, cause sure. you just live in this, you live in this dark place and you come yeah. out there and you see how beautiful the world is again. It makes you want to live again. Um, so, the, so the other studies have shown that um, your hippocampus can actually regrow and your body can handle those motions again. Um, that's what adventure therapy does. That's what it heals. Um, and it works, man. It works. We've, we've been running AMOD, our foundation for two years. We've sailed 56 skies this last year. Um, all of them are still alive, which is freaking awesome. Um, yeah, we're doing that down here on the, on the Texas coast. Um, we're seeing it work firsthand. And then when we go do these screenings around the country, Shane, Shane's seen it several times. People come up and talk about how, how they feel alive again when they get out and get with another group of guys. So, that is the concept behind adventure therapy and that um, I preach it. I preach it as, as a cure, you know, you don't, you don't really need a pill to do it as, as long as you manage it. And that's what other people think is um, PTSD is just going to go away with a pill or something. Yeah. And PTSD just stops, you know, yeah. I mean, I got out in 2016. I still, I still have my issues, you know, but the difference is I know how to manage my body. Like I'll, I'll have to go sail. I'll have to get outside with a group of guys um, at least, a couple months, once a month, but um, even Samantha, um, my better half, should be like, I don't think you're doing too good. You need to get out. You yeah. know, just go <laughs> sail for a couple of days. I'm like, yeah. you're right. Yeah. I'm going. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it's good that it's good that you see it, and then it's good that you do it, right? It, it, that's really it's it's just uh, seeing it like that. And I guess even for from a soldier's perspective, you could even you know just seeing you know showing it to him that way right i'm sure that's part of it uh it's like there here it is this is what we're going to do this is going to take care of it let's do this let's you know let's move forward with it um shane i'm curious if if when you know you joined on was the venture therapy was this all a part of it still or that came on later on in the project yeah actually well for me i don't know maybe not for taylor as much it definitely kind of came on a little bit later i thought um which, but in like a really cool way, because yeah. I think what the film does is um, kind of like completes the circle. You know what I mean? Where we talk about something that, um, uh, you know, we talk about the issue or issues 
Uh, we talk about, um, and then we talk about, you know, how that comes about. And then we take it all the way back around and say, well, here's some solutions. Uh, and, and then here's, here's that solution in action, right? So Taylor's foundation, AMOD, is like a practical, tangible solution that he's now doing. So, I mean, I think that like, it's pretty great because, you know, we've, we've kind of come full circle, like I said, and, and now, you know, it gives us something to really talk about too when we do these screenings, like, you know, hey, sailing might not be for everybody, right? But you could do, there's like, there's so many of them now, man. There's there's horsebacking or horseback riding. There's uh, adrenaline rush, you know, NASCAR stuff. There's uh, oh, wow. biking, there's snow skiing, there's mountain climbing, there's ice mountain climbing. You know what I mean? Like anything you can think of that's like outdoors adventure related, there's a program for that, you know? So, you know, wow. while that's great at the same time, like it also says to me, like there's a huge need there, you know, sure. those organizations don't exist unless there's a need for them, you know? And so I think, you know, we just have like a long way to go still, you know? Um, and it's still, I think there's still like a lot of, a lot of education that's needed. Like, you know, Taylor, we heard a few times from people like, well, I'm not sure like how much more like awareness we need about, uh, PTS or veteran suicide. And it's like, dude, I think maybe a lot <laughs> because who has the balls to say that? Uh, well, you don't want me to you know say what I mean? that. I oh my trouble. God. <laughs> I mean, I, who in the world, I mean, that's a, even if I had that thought, I'd keep it to myself. That, this, that person is not, I mean, no offense. I'm sorry. That was just my first reaction. Like, you know what? We've heard about suicide enough. What? This yeah. is like, what? <laughs> it's, that it's, was a, uh... That was actually from one of our congressmen here in Texas that we talked oh. to. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, congressman. Love congressman. It's, it's tough, man. And, you know, and even like when we started doing like, uh, we started when the movie came out and we were trying to do some PR work and, you know, like, look, can we do some screenings? Do people want to review it? And, you know, we even got feedback of like, uh, well, you know, it's veteran suicide is like depressing. So maybe we don't really want to do anything about this. And it's like, well, all right, but it's a real thing now. Like, I mean, <laughs> like we're this, not making it up, you this, know? So this is crazy. This maybe is, it's, this, it's like, it's, yeah, it's like, all right, well, it's hard to hear, but it's true, you know? And so don't we think that we should be more aware of, of, you know, what our men and women who serve for us might go through? It's not to like, apply, like blanket coverage that like everybody struggles yeah. with ESD, right? Sure, you know? sure. Some do. And so we should just as like a civilian, I feel like it's partly like my responsibility to understand that to an extent, you know, or at least as best as I can. And so I think the movie is trying to do a little bit of that, too. You know, it's just kind of like, yes, hey, here's some basic understandings and uh, it's not going to solve all the problems, but it's certainly a conversation piece. You know, it's it's a platform to use to to talk about it and provide tangible solutions to it, too, you know. 100%. I mean, that's just crazy. Some of these responses are just insane uh, that some of these people are saying this stuff. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little blown away, uh, but not really surprised. You know, um, you know, it, it's kind of one of these things where if we're if we're willing to send people off, right, to join the military to protect our freedom, why are we not taking care of them on the way back? Like it's like they're disposable or something like First of all, just from a recruitment process, that doesn't sound like something anybody wants to get into, right? Like, of course, they don't mention that during recruitment. I'm sure it's flashy videos and, you know, <laughs> you're, you're going to be, you know, running through the dirt and you get a gun and helicopters and sound, you know, looks great, you know, and then you're like, wait a second, uh, th this isn't all it's cracked up to be. I have a couple of cousins that went in the military and that's pretty much what they told me. They're like, wait a second. This, this, uh, this is what I, what I thought it was going to be, uh, it, just really getting out like, you know, Hey, I need some help, um, with the VA, uh, you know, this, that, or the other, um, how are those sort of solutions? Okay. Cause what y'all are doing is sort of a private sort of a thing, right. You know, doing this for, for anybody, I know, realize that, but like, how to, how do you get like politicians involved to really start to make laws that make some of this because you know with the va and with the military you know make it some sort of like 
uh, thing that the UK has, right, where it's like this mandatory thing. How does that happen? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I've spent a lot of days at sea pretty pissed off at what's going on. Um, and then when I came back to the States and started doing all the screenings um, with Shane and the team, I realized a lot of people don't know. A lot of people that represent our communities don't understand. Like they understand that you go overseas to protect the country and you come back and you're having, you have a hard time, you know, veterans are killing themselves. Um, A lot of them don't, don't know why, you know, they don't. And if you don't know why veterans are killing themselves, then you're never going to propose a solution. Um, That's one of our biggest things with this film. We hope to do is if we can get enough people to see it, especially people that represent our communities, um, and they understand when we bring to the table, hey, this is what other countries are doing. You know, they're focusing on preventing suicide, on keeping guys healthy before they get homeless, before they start killing themselves and taking drugs. You know, what happens if you keep people healthy before that happens? Yeah. When we bring that to the table, they're going to understand it and they're going to say, hell yeah. I mean, you can't argue with that, you know. Um, and, and I think that's a lot of problems. So I think there's a little grace there. I think a lot of people that represent us don't know because it's like, 37% or 27% of people in Congress are, weren't veterans. So it's not, it's not their fault, man. It's, um, but it's Just our job aware. to, yeah, yeah. And it's our job to, to get it in front of them and talk about it because like, they do represent us and make those decisions. And they have the ability to implement, to rewrite the UCGA or implement a program in the United States that's funded by our government to make sure um, each veteran can go on our adventure therapy program. And it doesn't even have to be a government program. Like Shane said, there's so many nonprofits that have popped up all over the country because veteran suicide is such a big freaking deal, dude. You can go to any major city in the States and there's an adventure therapy program there, guarantee it. Wow. Um, we work with, with a lot of them. Um, and like Shane said, they, they haven't popped up because it's it's what you want to do. You know, I don't want to <laughs> run a nonprofit, but I want my buddies to stop killing themselves. And that's Absolutely. kind of the mentality with all of these. Sure. So the government doesn't need to create a program. It's already made. There's already programs all over the country. All it has to do is, is, is fund and allow the time for people after their deployments to go to these programs. Yeah. Um, that's a pretty simple fix, honestly. Just connecting some dots, right? And it'd be nice to like, just hear, I don't know. I mean, I guess I don't, this is a tough thing to say, but like, it'd just be cool if like some of the politicians were like, I'll just use this movie as an example, you know, hey, maybe they don't love it. But at the same time, if like, you know, the governor of Texas, I don't know if he's listening, said like, hey, check out this film. This is a great resource to learn a little bit more about our, uh, you know, the men and women who serve for us or who have yeah. served for us. Yeah. Great. You know what I mean? Now, you know, that reaches, that's like a big statement if somebody would do something like that. And like, it doesn't have to be this movie. It could be something else, but like to really like speak out and start pointing people in different directions and say, hey, look at this program, check this out. I mean, maybe those things are happening a little bit, but it just doesn't seem like, it's almost like everybody's like afraid to like really like put themselves out there in some way, you know? Um, Well, what if I do this or I say this and this happens, you know? Like, I don't know, just be nice to see like, I'm just saying it and check it out and, and here we go, you know? Yeah, simple support, absolutely. Yeah, totally, no, totally understand that, Shane, absolutely. What's the, what's been the biggest struggle just from like trying to get this film distributed? Um, you know, we, we, you know, we had, we have a distributor and, uh, they've been great. They've been helping us along. Um, you know, one of the big obstacles that we face is that, you know, we're an ind- we were like, like truly like an independent film team, yeah. um, you know, and the the challenge that comes with that is that you know we don't have a big marketing budget right so these sorts of uh, podcasts are really really valuable to us because it, it enables us to reach another another audience right um and so we really rely heavily on people talking about the film you know uh, we get that all the time how can i help and you know my kind of standard answer has become tell three people right you know pick three people that you know Absolutely. it's really easy it doesn't cost any money and yeah. ask them to watch the movie you know and then if they love it and they find some value in it and they feel that it's you know been educational or it's you know been impactful for their own life ask them to do the same thing you know so it's uh that's kind of like our biggest challenge is letting people know that it's available. Right. And that there's some substance to it and it can, you know, 
it's more than just entertainment. I mean, we tried to make it entertaining for obvious reasons, sure. you know, so it's enjoyable to watch and it's cool and fun, exciting. Um, but there's the other component is that it's also serving a purpose too. Absolutely. No, it's a, it's a phenomenal film. It really is. It's a phenomenal film. It's, it's well made. It's well put together. The story's there. Um, you can find something to relate to it. Um, yeah, it's it's a wonderful film. It really, really is. Um, I see a lot of documentaries. Those are like the hottest things to watch nowadays, right, on TV. Like, who hasn't seen a bunch of... No, th this is a solid one, y'all, for sure. Um, I've already told lots of people about the film. I mean, without a doubt, that that was... Uh, and definitely people I know that are veterans who are, are struggle with PTSD. I was like, man, y'all got to find out about this. Y'all, you know, got to look into this. Did you know that there's something like this that you could do? You know what I mean? I think that is such a big factor. It's just awareness of, you know, didn't even know this was available. Um, you know, that sort of thing. So yeah, spreading, spreading the word um, uh, for sure. So how is, um, how, how is everything going with the adventure therapy and that, that side of it? It's good, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we started in 2020 right before COVID started. And Oof. that kind of put a, put a halt on, on sure. getting people on a boat. You know, if you get eight <laughs> people on a boat right when everybody's getting COVID, yeah. uh, that doesn't work out well. So this last year, 2021 was the first year we ran all year. Um, and it was awesome. It was awesome. Um, we finished off the year doing the Harvest Moon Regatta. It's a race from Galveston to Corpus Christi. And we had guys from all over the country. We had from New York, Washington, um, Oklahoma, and then Texas. So, I mean, that was cool. Um, from all That's different great. backgrounds, too. You know, we had a 46 pilot in the Army, um, a couple of mechanics and Marines. And one guy was in the Air Force. I didn't really ask him what he did, though. I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> 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 He's a cool dude. He worked on the flight line. Um, and then we had another guy that, that drove a tank in the Army, so. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's they awesome. must make it's friends really too, well. right? Like, oh, dude, amongst it's freaking, themselves. It's instant, man. Um, yeah. Being back in that environment, it's it like nobody knows each other, never even heard of each other before. And most of the time on these sales, I don't even say anything. I don't really talk. All the guys just start talking. And women, we've done several um, women veteran sales, and then women will come on on our other sales as well. Um, but they'll all talk the whole time. You know, um, there's Love just it. things that when you're sitting around a bunch of people that you don't have to say what you went through. You just, you understand it. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things people can talk about that you don't at home. Um, yeah. It's, it's really cool to see. No, that's amazing. I mean, that's, that's so amazing, man. It's a, uh, it's not, you know, a lot of times that a film comes along like this, that has, that, that has such an impact. Um, that's about something that's important to um, not just accomplishing something. There was just something bigger there. Um, I'm sure that was scary, you know, filming something and not knowing, you know, what you're actually going to make of it um, with no real plan. I'm sure a lot of documentaries go through that. I've talked to other documentarians who it's like, well, we're just filming. We, we think we know what's going to happen, but really we don't. So we're just covering our bases and, you know, hoping we get <laughs> something by the end of it. You know, we'll, we'll put it all together at the end. That's got to be like terrifying uh, uh, in and of itself. Like the one scene, there's one scene in the movie, yeah, you know, quick you know a little action scene to give people a teaser where you're like climbing up this i almost said a pole i know it's not a pole the whatever the, the ship uh the the mass of the ship um oh, yeah. and that you 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 know steven is is uh, he's right steven he's over there with the camera filming <laughs> yeah. i'm just thinking you got to do that on top of this in a store you know like yeah just make it even harder like on yourself <laughs> like i love it i love it it's it's crazy that's cool it yeah. was it was difficult Oh, absolutely. Uh, well, I know, I know this will probably be hard to say, but you know, if you had to say what was the hardest part of that trip, first of all, let's say how long of a trip it was. Yes. Uh, just under two years took us. A, we, yeah. We said sail from Florida and then down to the bottom of the world took about two years, you know, and it probably, we probably could have done it in a little over a year, but when the boat caught on fire that we had to come back to the States and uh, yeah, raise little, some funds. A little boat it. on fire, you know, <laughs> whatever. It's a, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, small problem. You yeah. Know. Small problem. <laughs> we tried duct tape. It didn't work. <laughs> it did not work. <laughs> it did not work. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. A little under two years. So the hardest part, I still think about it today um, was whenever, 
um, John and Steven flew back to the States. I mean, that was a really hard decision. And I mean, I'm talking weeks of us arguing and fighting about it. Um, it was, that was one of the hardest things I had to do for sure was, oh, was, man. uh, send John and Steven back home and sail to Valdivia. Uh, yeah, honestly, that's a really like tense part of the film. Uh, honestly, was, that was, that was, a, that's a real point in the film where you're just like, what is going to happen? I, I mean, it's a, it's a nail bite. You're on your, you, you know, you're on the edge of your seat. Like, you, you know, like Shane was saying, it's, it, you, you know, it's something real, but at the same time, it's entertaining. So you're, it's yeah. a weird way to watch something. If you know what I mean? Like this is actually happening. It's not a movie. This is not an actor, do, you know, that's going through this. This is like legitimately happening. Um, that is terrifying. I can't even imagine you having to go through it. It kind of gave me the Alex Honnold climbing vibes. You remember that movie where he yeah, climbed yeah. Uh, El Capitan yeah. or whatever? It yeah. gave me it gave me those vibes watching this film. I got cool. those same vibes, you know, just like, oh my God, what a journey. This is insane. Is this going to happen? You know, it's crazy. Yeah, people should definitely check out this film. I mean, without a doubt, right? That's what well, what are some of the screenings? Um, like, how do those go down? Like, what are they like exactly for people to know? Like, they, they can check on the website and I guess I should look at the website here and see if it says that on there. Yeah, we're, we're kind of winding down on like the in-person screens just oh, okay. for obvious reasons of it being Christmas time. But sure. you know, we have a couple coming up in January. Those are, I think those are private screenings. Though. There's one we're going to, um, is it called Paris Island? Tailored in South Carolina. That's with the uh, oh, wow. Marines training base. Maybe I'm, wow. getting, I'm getting that right. No, yeah. Pair of wow. for uh, the East Coast basic training for Marines. Okay. That, that would be a great tour. Hit yeah. military bases showing this film. That exactly. that's that yeah. would be unbelievable. Yeah. That's what we're trying to do. We we're we're in consideration for an Academy Award. You know, we're we're on the we're on the long list, as they say. So we're we're hoping we'll make it to the short list and hey, and, any uh, list. Hey, right, I right, mean, on the list, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any list on that is uh, is amazing. Wow, congratulations! I did not know that. That's that has to be absolutely amazing uh, feeling. Uh, it's cool. Sure. Yeah, awesome. yeah. Especially if we make the next cut, you know. So uh, it's uh, seems like it's very much a popularity contest. For we're learning a lot as we go here. You I'm know? sure. So, you yeah. know, absolutely. Yeah. Like anything, right? It becomes political uh, in, in some way, um, as always. Let's, you know, I wanted, I'm curious just for people that are going to watch this who aren't boat people, like what kind of boat it, is it that you used and like what kind of, I don't know, but in, in layman terms, you know, what kind of motor sail, like, I, you know, I don't know anything about this stuff. Yeah, it's a 36 foot boat, which is really small in ocean crossing boat terms. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're in, we're in, you know, an average of about 50 to 40 foot seas when we got around Cape. What's Horn. the minimum like boat then that tip, you know, typically people would use just for a point of reference. 45 feet is pretty comfortable crossing the sea. And oh, wow. That. That's a big difference. Yeah. And that's on the small end. I mean, you want to be in a 52, 55 foot boat for sure. Um, wow. But you, you can do it comfortably in a 45, 42 foot boat. Is that like so, the there's the scene in the film where your friend gets on and he's like, well, I thought the boat was gonna be bigger. Like, yeah. <laughs> that was yeah, so John. funny. Oh man, that was so great. The look on his face, like, well, the space, right? It's like, I guess it's all. About, <laughs> guess I'm sleeping next to you. you know? yeah. <laughs> it is much smaller in person when you see it. You're like, I was like, that was my first thought. I was like, you guys have been living on this boat for like. A wow. year and a half. I'm like, how did you do this, man? <laughs> <laughs> it gives a character though, right? It had character. She did, man. Yeah. I actually just talked to John last night. He called me. So he teaches uh captain's courses here in Texas, people to get their, their captain's coast guard's license. And he called me. I was like, dude, I was thinking about the old lady today, man. Old I miss lady. her. I was great like, name, I know. too. What a great yeah. name. So good. So yeah, good. we did we definitely miss her. None of us will go sail down there again on a fiberglass boat though that's for sure um, <laughs> ran into too much ice yeah too, too oh too much ice yeah yeah some of the you know some of the adventures y'all go on are, are quite amazing i'll leave it at that so so is the boat the boat is not around then no nope, she's she yeah she's still down in patagonia 
Oh, but she's still afloat, as they say. Is that the right nautical term? I don't know. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. If we learned anything from that trip, it's it's how to keep a boat above water, and we had a lot of practice with that. <laughs> Definitely, man. I mean, there's it's leaking. It's you know, there's water. Y'all are pushing, but I guess that's how boats are. I mean, I guess things just float. It takes a lot to get the boat down. Is that really, you know, I don't know. I, yeah, a, I, that's a good thing. You know, nobody's asked nobody's asked that before in my interview. Um, so I had two I had two rescues we got called out on. Um, both of them were for an abandoned sailboat, and that was, that was the biggest lesson I took getting into sailing. Um, one, the first sailboat I got on and got the log, and um, nobody was on it. And it turns out those people abandoned ship in a storm. They jumped in the water because they oh thought the God. ship was going to sink. Oh, and, what a horrible feeling. Yeah. Um, and then we found that boat out there floating, still going strong, dude, on its own. <laughs> um, uh, sure. And then the other one, um, they abandoned ship. They actually died, uh, but nobody was on that ship. They died like four months earlier in a pretty bad storm after they after they abandoned ship. They drowned. And, um, dude, I always, I've always thought about that. I was like, that's the first thing I teach people whenever I, whenever I take them sailing and stuff is if you're in a storm, don't leave a ship. Don't abandon ship. I'm like, we've seen it so many times. People jump yeah. overboard and then the boat just doesn't sink, just keeps on going. Um, boats are pretty, pretty hard to sink. You got to be in really big seas and something's really got to be wrong with your boat. Um, so you always hold on to, to the last moment. The amount of work we did on the old lady is abnormal for for cruising, <laughs> for sailing. You shouldn't have to do that much. Like you should you should do regular maintenance, like you know, changing oil and seals and and so in sails, but you should never have to repair like a transmission in the middle of the sea in 30 foot seas. That shouldn't, that shouldn't happen. Oh, I can't even, um, ima I mean, I can't even imagine. Um, yeah, yeah there's it's not a good, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that, that sounds like the worst possible position to be in, right? Like, it's not a good representation of how sailing should be. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's about, <laughs> if people are thinking about going sailing, they can watch the film and that's about worst case if they're wondering what worst case could be. I love how you mentioned also like YouTube. You learned a lot just watching YouTube, how to get, you know, how many people watch YouTube and do these, do these sorts of adventures, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. I freaking love YouTube, dude. Um, too. Today, one of the guys that sails with us at, at AMOD, he was over here at my house today. And we were like, can you imagine if we learned from YouTube when we were like 13, where we would be today? Like if you were watching hours Absolutely. of investing videos yeah. or hours of building stuff, it'd be like yeah. a master craftsman investor right now, <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Didn't have you to. Absolutely, man. What would I have done with my GI Joes back in the day? <laughs> you know what I mean? My gosh, would have been a different, different childhood. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's weird to be part of the transition, right? To be that generation that's like part of had a little bit of both, you know? Yeah. Cause I'm not all like, Oh, Oh, my phone. I don't know how to use it. You know, I'm not that ridiculous. You know, I know how to use a, a smartphone. No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, I can't do everything on it, but I can make phone calls and stuff. It's supposed to make you smarter, right? Isn't that the whole point of the smartphone? It's supposed to make you smarter. I don't think that's really what happens. seems like it's doing a lot of thinking for us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm, o I'm okay with that. Um, you know, it, you know, Speaking of like automation, it's it's almost a solution for some of the military stuff too. That you know, you're talking about people working in some of these crazy environments that they maybe shouldn't have to be, you know, working these sort of jobs. We we should find a way to automate that some way. Uh, it's got to be absolutely terrifying um, to just throw people into that and scoop them out and be like, okay, but you know, go tow trucks now. You know, <laughs> it's like right. It's like such a it's just it's just mind blowing to me how and I'm guilty of it myself. I have to admit, um, what am I doing about it? You know, essentially, um, I, you know, I think knowing what to do, I think there's a lot of people like myself who didn't realize it was such a big problem or did, but just don't think about it on a daily basis and are happy to once it's presented. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do something about this. Um, I think your film is a great tool that people can use, um, which I'm going to spread. Absolutely. Um, it's a great message. It's it's a great solution, honestly, because it also continues. The Hell or High Sea stories continues past the film. 
That's what's also great about it. It could be even a great television show, right? Just every episode, it's a new person on a new adventure. Yeah. New veteran, a new veteran, you know, overcoming backstory. Discovery Plus, are you listening? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> absolutely. Discovery. Right? Discovery. <laughs> are they the best? Absolutely. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it would be a phenomenal show because you have, right? Everyone loves these like, the crab fishing and the ice trucking and uh, right all these like crazy shows so you make one that uh, that has this like real purpose behind it i mean you're actually making a change and and really helping people that actually need it and then those people go back right that that's i guess we'll kind of end on this we'll kind of end it you know through this don't the people that come to these adventure therapies then go back and probably tell a few people right of their own experience of how it was and how it helped them and now they're on the track to help other people you think that yeah. that happens yeah it happens all the time i see it all the time um, most of the people that we sail with are referrals somebody comes back and, and oh, then they know awesome. another veteran in their community that's having a hard time or they're you know what happens this is pretty standard uh, somebody's wife will reach out to a guy we've sailed with and be like hey it's not doing good at wow. all um, i don't know wow. what to do or where he can go to get help he's trying to go to the va he can't get in um and then he's like actually I was just with this group of guys sailing off the coast of Texas. Um, and then we'll get that text message and, uh, and then we'll bring them on, man. Or if we, if we can, if we're already at sea or something, um, there's several other nonprofits we work with. One's um, horseback riding out, out in Brenham, uh, Texas. Yeah. They'll take them out there for a couple of days and ride and uh, have campfire and hike. You know, it's pretty oh cool. Oh my God. That sounds so awesome. There's a lot of avenues for sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah, people will definitely go back and, and make their community healthier. Yeah, absolutely. Right. It just, it just plants a seed. Um, yeah. Shane, any final thoughts, um, on that or anything else? Um, uh, you know, make sure I don't leave anything out or anything we want to highlight. Yeah, no, I mean, actually what Taylor just said is, is really great. You know, I think, cause it's like, you know, that's exactly what the movie is supposed to be. I, I think you said it's like a tool or a resource and that's what we like to think of it as, you know, um, that it enables people to, point them maybe in a direction. Um, so maybe it points them to AMI, Taylor's Foundation. Maybe it points them to a different organization. Uh, you know what? It, and it doesn't have to be an organization, you know? It could simply just be like, you know, a friend reaching out to a friend. Hey, how's it going? Um, you know, like, that's the thing that I've learned through this is like, you don't have to like, you don't have to say, you don't have to like always like say the right thing. You know, you just have to be present. You know, sometimes people will say like, well, well what do I do? I don't know what to do. Where do I go? What, you know, what will I say? And, I, you know, I just say like, just show up, you know, you're here right now. <laughs> you're at the screening. Just show yeah. up, you know, like you just have to be present. Um, and that's, that's really it, you know? So I don't know. It's not, it's not a big leap to like get involved and to be an asset to, to the, you know, our, our community in general, wherever you are, you know, um, I'm here in Philly, it's super easy to do it. My family's in rural Chester County, not hard for them either. So it's, you know, you don't really have to be anywhere specific and anybody can have, I, you know, I think everybody can play a part if they choose to put it that way. Absolutely. And I think people want to, are happy to, again, you either know somebody or you were in the military yourself or you know somebody that knows somebody or your family or something i, I mean that you know it would help um in some way so no um you know my best to you guys i know you guys have a lot um going on to to you know promote the film and and just you know the other stuff that's going on with with hell or high c so we'll obviously um promote this i'll be pushing this myself just personally to anybody and everybody um it is a great um just a great thing y'all are doing man um you know, my hat's off to y'all. And, um, I know it's just quite a journey Taylor that you went on and, uh, you know, I can't imagine, I'm sure it'll stick with you for a long time. Um, help you grow as well. And, you know, the fact that you're spreading the love and wanting to help other people is, is, is amazing, man. Cause a lot of people just don't live life like that. Right. So, uh, that's a great thing. You, you already, you already did service for the country and like, you don't stop. It's in you. It must be in you you know yeah. must be in you to serve other people like serve your community and serve humanity man that's a that's a powerful thing to have inside of you so that's awesome man i'm i'm jealous i wish i had i wish i had that i think you do i think it's a texas thing dude i don't think it's me you know it's freaking <laughs> hot as hell down here and then we get hit by hurricanes everybody takes care of each other <laughs> that's, that's a good point man. 
that's a good point well you know appreciate your humility uh for sure um definitely texans looking out a hundred percent man i'm all, all about that for sure so well uh you know gentlemen again um you know i do a separate uh, intro too so i'll make sure i'll mention all the website and all the other stuff don't worry about any of that we'll put all the details in our description as well and you know we'll be pushing this again um yeah so again cool. thank you guys so much we really thank appreciate you. your time uh, yeah, yeah. A great time appreciate your time thank you, sir. Absolutely. absolutely okay right. guys well enjoy the rest right. of your day talk soon thank you too. all right bye-bye bye. and now it's time for my favorite part of the show the end credits this is everyone responsible for making the show happen executive producer sebastian sauerborn Podcast Manager, Nevena Ponovich. Marketing Manager, Caroline Grape. Video and Audio Editors, Danilo Vojnov and Pavel Sebastianovich. Thumbnail Designer, Marko Vukovic. Social Media Manager, Ursa Rusman. Guest Outreach, Corey Menciez. Designing Image Quotes, Jay Apuya. Social Media Videos, Labri Fernandez. Outreach Support, Yonet Del Mundo. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time.